continuing with our discussion on synthesis, today we will be talking in some more detail about the process of logic synthesis, synthesis at the level of logic. So, first let us try to understand what is the basic problem of logic design or logic synthesis. To start with, uh, we, we assume that we are only considering combination logic. The reason is that if we have a finite state machine, there are very well defined ways through state assignment, tabular techniques to convert that into equivalent specifications for combinational part and sequential part. Okay. So, that is a very well understood approach. So, we will be concentrating right now on the combinational part of the problem. That means, how to synthesize or optimize the combination specification part of the design specification. So, the basic problem here is to convert from logic behavior, maybe in terms of logic, logic equations to gate level net lists. Now, again I reiterate that requirements may be conflicting. You may need to maximize speed, minimize area power, but everything you cannot get together. So, if you maximize speed possibly you will be paying for more area and more power. Okay. And moreover there can be other considerations like suppose uh, you have a logic equation like this a simple example. So, if you take B C common from here, you can see that immediately this gets minimized to this expression. So, so in terms of this straight implementation in terms of and and or, you get this. But if your technology library or if your component library says that you can use only negative gates, negative gate means NAND nor, not, and or invert, then you will have to redesign or translate this design net list into an equivalent net list like this, which consists of NAND and NOT. As you can see here number of gates has increased with respect to this. So, these are some of the constraints that we need to fulfill. So, here we cannot do much about this, we do not have AND and OR gates available in our library, we must redesign them using NAND and NOT. Okay. Now, the next thing is that how do we specify the logic behavior which we want to synthesize. Now, there are many methods, I am showing here two of the more popular methods. One is the so called PLA format and other is the very well known sum of products form. Well, sum of products form need not require any explanation, it is the standard Boolean expression form if, if there are multiple outputs to specify one equation for each. Now, this PLA format you know that a programmable logic array can be represented by a so called personality matrix. Now, this particular specification behavior of the PLA says that there are three inputs, three outputs and four product terms. Now, in terms of the PLA layout, if I draw, there are three in inputs, one, two, three. Say this is A, A bar, B, B bar and C, C bar. There are three outputs, so this, this and this and there are four product terms, 1, 2, 3, 4 and this portion of it specifies the interconnection. See 1 x 1, this part is the end plane, this part is your so called AND plane and this part is the so called OR plane of the PLA. In this, this portion represents the AND plane 
and this portion represents the odd plane. Now, in the end plane, if there is a 1, it indicates that there is a connection with the uncomplemented literal. A 0 means there is a connection with the complemented literal, x means there is no connection with that literal. So, 1 x 1 means for the first one, 1 means it is connected with the connection here, there is a transistor here, this b is not connected. 1 means again c is connected uncomplemented. 0 1 1 means here there is no connection and in the odd plane 0 means no connection 1 means connection 0 1 1. Similarly, for the next one x a is not connected 0 0. So, b bar is connected c bar is connected 0 1 0 0 1 0 1 x 0 1 means a is connected x not connected 0 means c bar is connected 1 0 0 1 0 0 x 1 1 x 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1. So, this is the PLA. So, there are three outputs you can see. So, the product term realizes what? The first product term realizes A C, the second realizes B bar C bar, the third realizes A C bar and the fourth one B C. So, the first output A C bar, second output A C or B bar C bar or B C, the third output A C or B C, you see it is the same specification as this. Okay. So, these are the two alternate ways of specifying the same thing. Sometimes we specify it by PLA, sometimes we specify it by equations. Now, the logic synthesis problem given the input specification in, in, in one of these two forms, mainly we will have to do or carry out a process of simplifying the logic equations. So, in the process of simplifications, we are primarily looking at reduction in the number of literals and also operands. Okay. This is the first step that we want to minimize the logic equations. Minimization is one thing, then we will have to synthesize like all the gates, that means all the expressions in the minimized form may not have equivalent gates in the library. So, you will have to map the logic equations to gates. See, first one is a purely mathematical step, you are doing minimization of Boolean expressions. Second one, you are mapping the expressions to available gates. Third one, after you have finished mapping them into gates, you do some sort of gate level optimization. Like if you have an OR gate followed by a NOT, replace it by NOR. Or if you have some special considerations for delay or power or area, you can do some optimization based on the context of the design. If you are wanting to minimize delay, you try to reduce the number of levels by combining gates, moving gates here and there and so on. And of course, after we have finished the gate level optimization, finally, you will have to do this technology mapping step, because ultimately this, this uh, technology mapping step is essential, so that you pick the correct cells which are available in the library in the technology library, so that you can you can ultimately go into the final physical implementation of the design. Okay. Now, this logic synthesis problem has been studied uh, for a long time, there are many classical approaches or methods uh, which are available in books and in the literature. So, very quickly we will be looking at a couple of them, we start with two level minimization. And when we talk about two level minimization, the first method that comes to our mind is the classical Carnot map method. Now, recall in the Carnot map method, we construct a table or some kind of a chart, and on that chart, 
all the true min terms are represented by a 1 and the do not care min terms are represented by a x and we try to cover them using as few and as large a cube as possible. That is how we do or carry out the minimization and it is more of a you can say a visual process that we do. We look at it pictorially and you try to identify the bigger cubes. Now, it is not very easy to automate the Carnot map method by implementing it on a computer for obvious reasons. And another big problem is that, well as you know the Carnot map you can use maximum for 5 or possibly 6 variables not more than that. So, in general if there are n inputs to the circuit, the Carnot map will contain 2 to the power n entries. Okay. So, the number of entries grow exponentially in the number of inputs. This is one big problem that the size of the problem increases very rapidly. And of course, this is the objective of Carnot map I told you to find minimum prime cover that means, there should be fewest terms and you have to choose the maximal covers. Okay. And you try to utilize the do not care terms judiciously, so that the covers become bigger and the number of terms becomes fewer. Now, as I correctly mentioned earlier that uh, the Carnot map method of optimization is difficult to automate primarily because of two methods. One is that it is more of a graphical method which you do through visu visual in inspection and secondly the minimum cover problem has been shown to be an NP complete problem which is computationally difficult. So, if you approach if we apply any kind of a greedy approach there is always the likelihood that you get into a solution which corresponds to a local minima, but that is not the overall best solution. You get into a local solution that is not the best possible one. So, finding the best possible solution is not an easy task for large values of n. And of course, uh, again looking at the problems of K-map once again, the number of cells you have that grow exponentially in the number of input variables. So, a 50 input circuit is a very practical one. So, just to imagine you will be having 2 to the power 50 so many cells, this is simply impractical. Okay. So, if you want to have something similar to K-map implemented in a computer, you, you, you will not implement it just as a map, as a picture. You will have to have very efficient data structure for representing the functions and also for searching for minimal prime cover. So, one such approach is the Quinn McCluskey method. The Quinn McCluskey method is essentially a systematic way to approach the problem, but it is not really much different than K-map method. In K-map, we are doing it visually. In Quinn McCluskey method, we are trying to formulate a systematic approach. This is this method since it is systematic, it is easy to implement in software, but easy to implement does not mean that it is efficient. Computation complexity still remains high. Okay. So, if there are n number of variables, the total time complexity can easily go up to 2 to the power n. This is one thing which we cannot eliminate in Quinn McCluskey method. So, what is the solution? Now, the solution is that this Carnot map or the Quinn McCluskey method, the basic you can say the premise of this method was that I want to find the best solution. So, let us try to find out a systematic method to do that, but practical considerations say that since the minimum prime cover problem itself is NP complete. So, it is futile to search for the best solution always, particularly if the problem size is big, is large. So, rather it would be much better if we can have a method which can give us very good solutions in reasonable amount of time. 
that very good solution does not mean that it is the best possible, but it is very close to the best. Okay. So, one such method which is in fact a very popular method used for two level optimizer is a software package which is called Espresso. This uses an approach like that. You will see that in this method there are some steps uh, which may appear to be funny because those steps are not anything through which we are trying to improve, improve a solution, but we are expecting that if we do this in the future we may lead to a solution which is better. This is more like a random search kind of an approach we are following with the expectation that we will be landing up into better solutions in the future. Okay. So, and again in these algorithm there is nothing like this is the end of the algorithm, you reach here and you finish, this is the last. See as long as your computer time budget permits you can go on running the algorithm, you will be getting better and better. Okay. Fine. Now, before trying to explain the algorithm, let us introduce some notations. For an n input function, I had mentioned that there are 2 to the power n possible main terms. This can be represented by an n dimensional space. This is a Boolean space because along each of these n dimensions values can be either 0 or 1. And each point in the n dimensional space corresponds to a unique combination of n literals. Let us take an example. Suppose we take n equal to 3. So, for n equal to 3, the, solu the solution space will look like this, a cube. Okay. Now, in this diagram, suppose the three input variables a, b and c and we assume that this is our origin. Okay. The origin means this represents the point where the APC values are 0, 0, 0. Suppose this is the dimension corresponding to A, this is the dimension corresponding to B and this is the dimension corresponding to C. So, whenever we are moving, moving along an edge in a particular direction, the value of the corresponding variable changes state. For example, here it will be 100. Zero, zero. Here it will be 0, 1, 0. This is the C direction, here it will be 0, 0, 1. This is again direction of A, this will be 1, 0, 1. This will be uh, direction of B, so 0, 1, 1. Direction of A, this will be 1, 1, 1. Direction of C, will be 1 1 0. Okay. So, this is what we are trying to say that this we look at it once so for a n, n input function n dimension boolean space each point map to a unique combination of the literals. So, each point of this n dimension space is mapped for example, this point is mapped to this combination 0 0 1 a, a equal to 0 b equal to 0 c equal to 1. So, it is the same for all other points. Okay. So, this each point in the space is uh, well with respect to the Carnot map, it represents the entries, okay. each entry represents some in term. And in this n dimensional space, if you take a conjunction of some literals, for example, in this n, n dimensional space, if you take a combination of these two literals say 0 0 1 and 1 0 1 together, this we call as a cube. This definition of a cube is very similar to that for a, a k map. Okay. So, a, a cube is a conjunction of literals and uh, then each of these literals are, are the points that are true. Okay. We will take only those points which are the true, which correspond to the true min terms. And when you say that there are expressions, so there will be 
there will be a number of such cubes we will be taking the disjunction or or of that. Maybe we have one cube like this, another cube like this, so this or this. Well, some of the combinations maybe do not care, like suppose uh, for a two cube there are only two variables a, b, these may be the combinations, say this is 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0 and 0, 0. This is a cube, say. Now, when you take a cube which consists of a bar, b bar and a b bar, they combine together this becomes only b bar. So, with respect to this cube a is missing. So, with respect to this cube we say that do not care literal is a, it is not that I am talking about do not care min terms, I am talking about do not care literals. So, when we have a bigger cube some of the literals are missing, those literals are said to be do not care literals. Okay. So, the basic approach behind espresso is to try and minimize cover of the onset of the function. See onset means the set of vertices that correspond to 1, like in k map we take only those min terms which are true min terms and try to cover them. So, the approach is very similar, we take only the true vertices which we call as the onset and we try to obtain a cover for them using minimum number of cubes and bigger cubes. Okay. Minimum set of cubes is, cubes is of course, one requirement and we can utilize do not care literals like in k map again, so that the size of the cubes can be made bigger. All right. So, now let us see what the espresso algorithm is essentially all about. So, here we present the outline of the algorithm. To start with, we have the sum of products form of the expression. So, when you say it is a sum of products form, so each of the product term corresponds to a cube which covers the onset, like if you have a function like this f equal to a bar b bar or a b c, then a bar b bar corresponds to a cube and a b c corresponds to another cube. So, it is a sum of products form, this is one cube, this is another cube. Now, this algorithm repeats three steps in an iterative loop until no further improvement is possible or your time budget runs up. Now, these three steps I will be explaining, these three steps are called expand, e redundant and reduce. Well, as the name implies expand means you try to increase the size of the cubes, expand. Second step, you try to reduce or remove some redundancy. So, the say, say here after the expand step, you may be having some cubes which are not necessary, which have become redundant. So, you try to remove them. In the third step, you try to reduce the size of the cubes. Okay, this may be well, it may appear to be funny, but you re really do this. You reduce the size of the cube with the hope that well, right now we may be we we may be worsening the solution, but this worsening may lead to a betterment in the near future. That is the expectation. Okay, so these three steps are repeated, and in the meantime, in the say during this loop, you you occasionally make some sudden changes to the solution, make some perturbations. Well, we will be explaining there are two ways you do perturbations, I will be explaining these two. Now, the objective of this perturbations or to make sudden changes to the solution is essentially to try and see that we do not get locked into a local minima. 
Well, if you make sudden changes to the solution, it is it is likely that uh, the solution comes out of that local minima and goes somewhere else. From there again, if you repeat those steps, we will we will be going towards a better solution. Okay. So, this is an approach which tries to do that. Now, as you can see from the steps that it is not a very deterministic algorithm that we start from somewhere, we stop at a point with the guarantee that whatever we have obtained is the best. No, it is not like that. Okay. So, we try to iterate, we try to make random changes with the hope that we will be getting a better solution but our hope may or may not be fulfilled in all cases. But it has been found that for most of the circuits, we can get a good solution in a reasonable amount of time, fast enough. So, now let us try to explain what are these, these three steps involved, expand, e redundant and reduce. So, the cube operation expand says, that you try to make each cube as large as possible without covering a point in the offset. Well, so if you have a smaller cube, you try to make it bigger. You this, okay. So, here you see, let us take an example here again. So, again let us draw that cube. So, uh, let us start with this one 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 1 0 1 0 1 1 1 1 1 0 1 0 0 1 0 1. Okay. So, in the original one it says that a bar b c bar that means 0 1 0 this one b c. B C means these two things taken together A bar B C or A B C and A B bar C bar 1 0 0 this. So, this was the original cover there were three cubes. Now, after the expand step and also there is a do not care literal A B bar C 1 0 and suppose this is do not care do not care I am marking by green this is do not care. So, after the expand step what you do, you try to expand all the cubes in whatever directions you can. Well, you see that you can expand in, in a number of different ways. Like this 0 1 0 which is there is a single cube, well I am seeing by different color. Suppose, you can combine this with a neighboring, see these are the, these are the on states, these are the true, lit, true min terms. So, you can make a cube like this, you can make a cube like this, you can make a cube like this. So, in the all possible ways you can expand the size of a cube, you do that and for doing that you can utilize the do not care literals. So, now you have 1, 2, 3 and 4 cubes which correspond to a function like this. Okay. So, this is essentially what this cube operation expand does. See, here we are simply trying to expand the existing cubes in all possible direction it can, but we are not checking whether the cube cover we have obtained in the process is redundant or irredundant. For example, in this one, suppose if you take this cover and this cover, then this cover is not required. Okay these two points are already covered by other two. So, some of this may be removed, but in the expand step we do not do that, we simply try to make the cubes bigger. And removing the redundancy that we leave to the next step, the step is redundant. So, the expand step will expose some redundant cubes. Now, in the cube of in now in the second step, irredundant step, we try to remove or throw out the redundant cubes. So, 
redundant cubes are those for which the points are already covered by other cubes, okay. those we can simply throw out. Now, in the early example, well as I had mentioned we can throw out one of the cubes B C, we can throw out this, we can retain this one, this two and this one three. So, starting from this we can identify that B C is redundant, we remove this, we get this. So, after this step E redundant, we get a solution where the redundancy is removed, right. So, you can expect that after expand and and E redundant, we get a solution which is you can say to some extent minimized. Well, well we have exp explored the expansion of the cubes and we have removed the redundancy, but you understand we still are following a greedy approach, we are not looking at the problem globally. So, maybe we have we are or we or may we have reached a point which corresponds to a local minima. So, the next step the reduced step it tries to help us explore other alternatives. Reduce step says that the cubes are reduced in size, reduced in size means we are again increasing the redundancy. Okay. So, a cube which is bigger I make them smaller like uh, say again I let me draw that cube I can explain. So, here we had uh, Okay, let me write down the values 0 1 1 0 1 0 1 1 0 1 0 0 1 1 1 0 0 0. Okay. So, a bar b was this. These are the strobing terms. A C uh, this this was the do not care okay. this was the do not care and a b bar this one this was the cover this was also true term. Now, after the reduce step uh, what you can do is that you can retain a bar b this is retained and the other ones we can retract this a c I can simply make it smaller I make it only this a b bar c I can simply make it this. So, some of the cubes may be made smaller by removing the do not care terms okay, or by taking out some some point which is covered by some other cube. So, in this way some of the cubes are making smaller. So, now I have this one big cube and two smaller cubes these three. Now, you may argue that means why we are doing this, we are making the solution worse. Yes, we are making the solution worse, but but our our intention behind doing this is that some of the cubes we have made smaller and in the process we have opened up possibly an avenue, so that the smaller cubes can expand in other directions in the future. Maybe if this was also a do not care term, now this cube can expand in this direction. So, we are now open to other possibilities that is why we are doing this. So, so, after this step the new cover will typically be different from the initial cover. So, as you as I mentioned the expand and redundant step after you do this after you do this uh, reduce if you apply again expand and redundant step, maybe you will be moving to another solution which which can be better, but but there is no surety that it will be better, but you are exploring other alternatives. So, so there, there as you repeat these three steps, what happens is that you are moving from one area of the solution space to the other, your total solution space is huge, 
it is not possible for you to explore everything, but you are trying to move from one part to the other using these three steps. And every time you always memorize that what is the best solution I have seen so far. So, after certain number of steps or after certain time have, have elapsed, you check or, or means if you see that what is the best solution you have seen so far and you report that to be the solution to be taken accepted. Okay. Now, as I mentioned apart from these three steps, you also carry out some kind of perturbations or some kind of sudden jerks to the solution. These are applied periodically in between in order to well, well even move out from one part of the solution to the other part. So, that uh, the chance of chance of falling or getting stuck into a small area of the solution space gets reduced. You can go out to some other parts of the solution and explore. Now, here the idea is something like this. Well, this is a very simple solution. Uh, suppose uh, I have a two variable cube A and B, a simple example say 0 0, 0 1, 1 0, 1 1 this is the direction of A and this is the direction of B. Well, A bar or A bar is this, these two points, B is this. Now, the first step or the, or the, or the, well, the, well, this is not a step, this is means one kind of perturbation this is called reduced gas, this is a name. This says that you retain these two cubes as it is, but also add some mode which are not common like a bar b bar. Let this also be a cube a b, let this also be a cube. Now, you have 1, 2, 3 and 4 cubes. Okay. So, the one which is common to both do not do that, but the others you also add them as a cube. So, now you allow them to expand in all other directions. So, actually this is somewhat similar to reduce, but you are exploring all the possibilities together. Okay. An expand gap is a similar step, well, here also I am showing. Suppose I have this map and you had these three cubes a bar b bar, you had this a bar b, you had this a b, you had this. So, now what it says that a bar b bar, you leave this as a cube, leave this, leave also this, but you take on this one, the other one you combine with either with this or with this. So, now there will be three cubes, one, two, three this is called expand gas. Of, of course, you can say after expand gas you can have a thing where one cube becomes a proper subset of the other, but still you return this. So, that during expand phase the small cube may possibly expand in other directions, right. But as you can see these are not any step which is used uh, to improve the solution consciously, but essentially you are trying to get a situation where you can explore steps uh, which uh, you can say you can explore other steps, other ways of, of expanding or moving out. Okay. So, let us take a small example and illustrate the different steps of this uh, this espresso algorithm. Let us illustrate with a 3 cube. So, let us this be the direction of A, this is B and this is C. 
say so means I'm I'm only showing the true min terms. This is a true min term. This is a bar b c zero one one. This is a true min term. This is another true min term zero one zero. This is another true min term. This is one one one. This is another. This is one zero zero. The same example I'm taking, and this one is a don't care. I'm showing it as dot. One zero one. Now in this example, what I said, I'm just repeating just to show all these steps together. That uh, suppose to start with, we have a cover where the one cover is this itself. One, there is another cover where this is this fellow is alone. There is another cover where you have these two. These are the three cubes. Now, in the expand step, what you can do? The first step is expand. I am just trying to summarize what we are actually doing. In the expand step, what you really do is that you see that in which direction. The existing cubes can expand. Like you look at this bigger cube, you see this cube cannot expand any further, because a cube can cover only two to the power certain number of nodes, one, two, four, eight in that way. But this was a singleton. You can see there is another true neighbor, so you can combine these two into one. So in the expand step, you can take these two together. You can also utilize the don't care. This single one, well, although you cannot expand this bigger cube, but this don't care one you can take along with this. You can have this as one. Similarly, this one can combine with this don't care. So now you have one, two, three, and four. This is expand. Now after expand, what I am said that you see that you now have all possible expansion, but you see. There are many cubes which contain end vertices which are already contained in other cubes, right? So some of them you can eliminate. So for example, you can eliminate either this one or this one, but you cannot eliminate this because it contains this vertex or this. But for the other two, the end vertices are contained in the other. So 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 you can eliminate one of them. So the e redundant step tries to do that. So after e redundant step, possibly you'll be getting a solution where you have this, you have this, and you have this. This one you remove. You have these three cubes. Now after that, as I said, that when you do that reduce. Reduce is the just the reverse of expand. That instead of expanding some of the cubes, you contract. Say the example I have said that you keep this, you retain this, but these two you remove and you make them smaller. Let this cube contract to this, and let this cube contract to this. Okay, so these are the. Different steps uh, which you can uh, use uh, in the espresso and espresso algorithm, as I said, it works in this way, and uh, you can uh, you can expect to get a good solution in a reasonable amount of time if you follow these steps. Now, to summarize uh, this espresso algorithm, what it does, this algorithm. Successively generates new covers. Well, until no further improvement is possible, this step you can use if you are not using the two perturbations. That means uh, these two perturbations I mentioned: reduce gas and expand gas. If you don't use them, then beyond a point you will see that you are not getting any further improvement. But if you use them, then you can drastically get away from the solution and you can explore newer. Portions of the search space. So essentially, what you 
do there is that instead of saying that I repeat till no further solution is possible rather than that I will say that I will repeat till my time budget exhausts. I will run my program for 10 minutes. And so, the within 10 minutes whatever best solution I get I will take it ok. And the good thing about espresso is that it had been it, it has been uh, tested over very large number of problems and it has been found to produce near optimal solutions which are very much acceptable. Now, since espresso is a two level optimizer it produces the functions in summer products form. So, so to talk about two level circuits uh, the, the first kind of circuit which comes to our mind is a PLA. So, this is used either for PLA minimization or it is used in a different context. Even for a multi level logic minimization sometimes we need a two level optimizers. So, this espresso can be used as a function which is called from within a multi level logic optimizer. And uh, statistically it has been found that uh, this espresso can process extremely large circuits say of the order of 10,000 literals, hundreds of inputs and outputs. But even for circuits of this size it does not take more than 15 minutes on a typical high speed workstation. So, what this means is that this espresso algorithm is an acceptable algorithm which many people uses in practice. And as we will see for many other algorithm that we will be uh, just studying or looking at uh, a bit later that in CAD, in VLSI CAD electronic design automation there are several different steps where the solution space is very huge. Solution space is huge and it is not possible to explore all portions or all parts of the solution together. So, there we go for a compromise. So, instead of trying to go for the best solution, we try to get a good solution, but within a reasonable amount of time. So, we will see that uh, well the way espresso algorithm works will give you a hint of what we really do. See espresso algorithm there are some steps which you can appreciate well we are moving towards the correct solution, but there are some steps where we are moving away from the good solution. So, that is the crux of these classes of algorithms that sometimes we move towards a good solution, sometimes we move away from a good solution. Our expectation is that in the process we will finally, land up in another solution which is better than the ones we have seen so far. Now, now here we have seen or we have looked at uh, this method of two level optimizations. Now, the question is that is this two level optimizer sufficient or we need to have some methods where the number of levels need to be more than 2. Uh, well, it is not very difficult to answer this question. See, if you think of some classes of circuits, we will give an example in the next lecture. There are some classes of circuits which can be implemented in two level realizations no doubt, but the number of resources and the complexity. Well, when I say number of resources and complexity it may mean number of gates, it may also mean the size of the gates because I told you earlier that bigger the a gate slower will be its speed. So, there are circuits for which two level implementations will be very complex to implement, but if you go for a multi level implementation you will see that there can be a drastic reduction in the amount of resources you require. And in practical situations there are many circuits which are like that. So, in practice people look for some methods or solutions which actually try to do an optimization 
taking not two, but more than two levels of logic. So, of course, delay is a parameter to be considered, but also there is another thing as I told you earlier, I am repeating, you will also have to look at the size of gates you are using. If you say, if you see that if you use more than one levels, more than two levels, but the size of the gates are less, then possibly overall on the whole, the delay of the circuit will be less and not more. Maybe number of levels is more, but the gates are smaller and simpler. So, in our next lecture, we will be looking at some aspects of multi level logic optimization and we will see the basic approach which is followed the problems involved and what are the main uh, you can say the directions in which people approach the problem. Thank you.